Illegal workplace discrimination causes people to be treated unfairly because of their race, color, sex, age, disability, religion, or national origin, among other characteristics. Discrimination affects not just the individual, but families and entire communities. It's everywhere. Good morning. My name is Micah Nunn, and today I'll be talking about discrimination in corporate America against people of color in the workplace. <clears throat> discrimination cuts to the core of what it is to be human. Someone's rights are being violated just because of who they are and what they believe in. This shows how discrimination is destructive and contributes to the perpetration of inequity. My research question is, to what extent has discrimination in corporate America had an effect on people of color in the last 20 years? <clears throat> Regardless of race, ethnicity, nationality, class, and more, we all have the right to be treated equally, nevertheless, we are frequently hear, we frequently hear terrible accounts of people who have been treated cruelly just because they belong to different groups than those in position of luxury and power. Here we have a graph showing the unequal pay and exploring the racial wage gap for men. Here you can see that a black man earns about 87 cents for every dollar that a white man earns. And if we look at here, we can see that Hispanics earn about 91 cents for, about, for every dollar a white man earns. And then on the other side of the spectrum, we have um, Asians, and they earn about $1.15 for every white man earns. The uncontrolled pay gap is driven by many forces. The data shows that a third of workers receive some type of employee referral for their current jobs, yet men of color are 26% more likely than white men to receive them. Referrals impact relation employee relationships with their manager, their engagement at work, and satisfaction with their employer. These factors, factors can subsequently influence performance reviews, pay increases, and promotions, which leads us into the next topic. Promotion rates. Representation, representation of women of color off, falls off relative to white men, white women, and men of color at every step in the corporate pipeline, leaving them severely unrepresented at the top. For example, Here we have a graph showing how at every step of the corporate ladder, women of color lose ground to white women and men of color. If we look in the graph, we can see that in the manager pos um, position, that men of color, or how men promoted to manager, in the manager position, we can see how this graph shows for every 59 men promoted to manager, so white men and men of color, which is 59, is only 12 women of color are promoted. We can also see that in another class, which, which is senior vice president, we can see that there's about 12 women of color that are moved up to manager and 61 men, white men of color that are above them moving up as well. As a result, men outnumber a woman significantly at the manager levels, which means that there are fewer women to, to promote to higher levels. Here we have an illustration by Norman Walkrell called The Holdout. In this picture, we see one woman and 11 men in a jury room. And what's special about this picture is the fact that what's being portrayed is still something that women are facing today. Back in the 1950s, women were seen as sensitive or weak-minded to deliberate facts of a trial and they could easily be swayed by the men. If we look at this today's society, we can see that some women still seem this way and look down on because of it, which affects them to be able to rise to their full potential. Another topic is mental health in the workplace. Because directly or indirectly, mental health and substance use challenges affect everyone. But for many people in communities of color, the process of navigating these challenges, especially in the workplace, can be more difficult. For example, there are problems like physiological impacts, so one may feel non-belonging and lack sense of safety, or this could even trigger bigger problems like stress, anxiety, or even depression. Another example could be the trauma effects of mental health. The current events, for example, like Black Lives Matter or Asian hate crimes, 
undoubtedly impact a person's mental health and physical well-being, which would lead effects to the everyday life, which, be, which could become concerning in the workplace. Lastly, I'd like to talk about black workers face microaggressions and bias, biases very common in the workplace. There's something called whitening resumes, which is basically where any some a person of color could put things that doesn't really classify them as I guess their normal race and they make it seem like they I don't know, they just take out things that are that classify them as for example black and they make it seem more reasonable. Um, there's also another example from this graph here, and a study was shown how an Asian lady took her name from being Asian, and she put it in a um, a job generator, and she got about four responses from people that wanted her to be her jobs. But after she changed her name to a more American-based name, and it states that she got more um, acceptances from her job. Solutions and limitations. Some of my solutions are develop a written policy that defines procedures and rules, educate all workers about discrimination, consider more than one option for communication channels, and conduct team building activities. Some limitations are rules and procedures may be broken, some may ignore the problem, some <coughs> may feel left out and offended for less intention, and employees may feel forced to accept problems living involving other races. Here's my work cited page, and thank you. Any questions? Thank you. I have two questions for you. You're fine right there. Um, what evidence did you gather that you didn't use, and then why didn't you use it? I gathered some evidence about the protection in the workplace and just um, protection and unequal treatment basically, and I didn't use it just because it kind of seemed repetitive and it just sounded like some of the other things I was already talking about. Okay. Uh, and if you had more time, what additional research would you conduct related to this issue? Okay. I would definitely want to do something. I'd want to look more into dis people of color that have disabilities in the workplace and um, trans or LGBTQ people because I did read about that and it seemed really interesting. I just didn't have enough time, so I didn't include it. 